Hey guys, what's up? It's Eli Knight with Funker Martial Arts and we're out in this uh, this area here. Something we have to think about is our environment all the time. I mean, if you never plan to get into a fight, so it's going to happen where it's going to happen. So um, if this guy had found something laying around, in this case he found a pipe laying around, there's all kinds of different tools and things that he could use. So I have to take this into consideration. Now, one of the things I've mentioned before is how important managing the distance is. That's just whenever we're striking. That's whenever we're fighting empty hand. I have to take extra care, extra caution to manage the distance if a weapon is involved. The most important thing for me at first is to make sure that I'm out of position where he could reach me right now. I'm not gonna be able to defend that that fast, not with the velocity that this can have. So my distance has to be good enough to where he can't hit me without lunging forward. For him to have to lunge forward creates a, a longer time for me to be able to react, a longer reactionary gap. Whenever he steps in here now, I meet him part of the way and come over here so that I can not block but veer off the arm. And then I'm gonna come in here, headbutt, get the clinch here so I have good control over the, the weapon arm. After I get control like this, I don't want to stay here for very long because he could switch hands, he could do a lot of different things to me from here. So after I hit this position, now I want to look to step forward, I broke his posture, step in make the throw. I maintain control over this arm so that from here I can go back and I can strip here by causing damage on the arm and not making it to where he can't hang on to this any longer. From this distance here, I make sure that he's not in a range where he can hit me right away. He has to lunge forward, that gives me time to react. Whenever he lunges in, I go here, get to this position, get the clinch, make sure that my structure is, is stronger than his, Step in front with broken posture here. Make the throw, knee on belly position. Go right here, make this figure four kind of configuration. Push the shoulder, connect here. Squeeze until the pain or the damage causes him to release the weapon, right? Then we come back, strip the weapon, do whatever damage I have to do or get out. Always be aware of your surroundings, okay? Don't just take my word for it though. You gotta get out there and you gotta train this kind of stuff. Get on the mats, do the reps. Thank you guys, keep watching. So when you're talking about uh, managing your, your timing and your distance as it relates to this you know, blunt object, uh, a lot of things can happen in that moment. You can miscalculate, you can get it wrong, you can fake. This isn't a, yeah. this is a magic pill. No, it's absolutely not. And I mean, you're up in the intensity as a force multiplier whenever he's got a weapon, you know, especially a long range weapon like that that covers that much distance. So my, my attention to, to distance, I need to kind of err on the side of caution because this technique is contingent on him coming in to close that distance and lunging at me and I have to kind of meet him at the appropriate time halfway. Now, if this guy is a, um, he's a very trained Filipino martial artist and he's very, you know, technical and everything, Two things. Uh, one, it's going to be much more difficult to do something like that, right? Maybe not impossible with some modification, but it's a lot harder. Two, not a lot of those guys go around attacking people on the street. So let's keep that in mind. So, right. but but principally, it's it's judging that moment in time um, when he's going to lunge. You got to go. Uh, I think Ryan Hoover said, "All in or all out." I mean, if you have an opportunity to get out of there, yeah. Absolutely. But the thing is, is if we've gotten even this close, and I am, I'm out of range, but. I don't know for sure if I can turn and run fast enough for him not to be able to catch me during that pivot point and chase me down and hit me. And that's going to be a lot harder for me whenever my back is turned to the guy to be able to defend myself. So this is, this is the hardest element to teach anybody is that you've got to make that judgment call yourself in the moment. The best thing that you can do though is to train and to do repetition after repetition. Get used to seeing this flying at you over and over again just like a boxer would see a jab coming at his face a thousand times, ten thousand times. Um, and then you're going to be able to recognize when it's time to go Go all in or all out like Ryan Hoover says. Yep. And like you said, don't take your word for it. Don't take my word for it, man. Get out there and train it. That's what you got to do. Yeah.